get started. If you wanna... yes. Good afternoon, everyone. We welcome each of you who have come today to share our celebration of the Shabbat. To share in the light of the candles and the songs and the dances of rejoicing. To pray for peace and create harmony in our homes. To rest so and renew ourselves for the important work to come. To give thanks for good health and freedom. To seek faith and, and freedom. To seek faith and courage. To remember always our heritage. Let us bask in the Sabbath rays of comfort as we join with family and friends in this celebration. Amen. Amen. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Now let's welcome the light, this holy Sabbath candles. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the kindling of the holy Sabbath candles. Amen. Thank you. 
in the whole Jewish Bible. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of His glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall speak of them when you're sitting at home and when you go on a journey. When you lie down, when you rise up, you should bind them for a sign on your hand. And they should be for frontless between your eyes. You should write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. We'll now read from Exodus 31. Shamaru in Israel, El Sashapos, Lahasois, El Sashapos, Lidoros, Ambris, The children of Israel kept the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout all their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel that in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from work. And rested. The noise was I teef talk of via mitilasecha. Lord, open thou my lips, that my mouth may declare thy praise. Almighty God, we remember the past. We look forward to the future. We treasure everything that is holy and special. And it is in your holiness that you sanctified this very special Sabbath day, made it the purpose of all the work of creation of heaven and earth, and you blessed it from all days and sanctified it from all seasons. And thus it is written in your Torah. By who I shall mind both heads, the calls for one. I hallow him be a much begin, lacto, I share us up. Why is both by yom hashvi? Be called lacto, I share us up. By Borekel him as yom hashvi. By Kade show so. Ki bau shavas mikol malachto, asher bara Elohim asaos. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their host. And by the seventh day God had completed his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work into which he had been engaged. And then God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it he rested from all his work which he had created, and in order for us to do. Almighty God, and God of our ancestors, please accept our rest, sanctify us with your commandments, and grant us a share of your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation, and purify our heart to serve you in truth. And in your gracious love, Lord our God, grant that we keep thy holy Sabbath as a heritage, and that Israel, who sanctifies thy name, may rest on it. Blessed art thou, O Lord, Mikadesh HaShabos, who sanctifies the Sabbath. Amen. Almighty God. Please restore our worship. We thank you for everything in the world. And we ask you to bless us with peace as written. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you favor and grant you peace. Almighty God, please bless us with peace. Blessed art thou, Lord. Who blesses the whole world with peace. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find favor before thee, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May he who makes peace in the highest heavens, who shalom
may make peace for us. We are Yisrael for the whole world. We Maru and let us say, We Maru, Amen. Hiya Hashem Shalom, Hiya Hashem Shalom, Shalom Aleinu. We are called Yisrael. Hiya Hashem Shalom, Hiya Hashem Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. We are Shalom, we are Hashem Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. We are Hashem Shalom, we are Hashem Shalom. Oh Shalom Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. Less than a week till Rosh Hashanah, and we stand here now, the month of Elul, and it's a custom to sound the shofar every day, as anticipating that big day of Rosh Hashanah when we have the mitzvah of the shofar. Unfortunately, I won't be here, but I'm going to leave the shofar here, either in my office or in that room. I don't know if anybody here knows how to sound the shofar, if anyone wants to try on Rosh Hashanah, just so um, if you want to have that mitzvah, but for now, I'll sound it, and I will be conducting a service next Wednesday, Wednesday uh, also at 2 o'clock in honor of Rosh Hashanah, um, and everyone's welcome to that as well, and then on Friday, Reverend Ella will be covering for me for this service. Psalm 27, the Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The evil doers press up against me, deep my flesh, my enemies, and my foes. But as they who stumble and fall, even though an army were arrayed against me, my heart would not fear. Though war should arise against me still, would I be confident? One thing I ask from the Lord, one thing I desire, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hold the pleasantness of the Lord and to meditate in the sanctuary. Surely he will hide me within his own tabernacle in the day of distress. He will conceal me in the shelter of his tent. He will set me safe upon a rock. Thus my head shall be high above all my foes around me. I will offer sacrifices within his tabernacle to the sounds of trumpets. I will sing and chant praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me. And I might the half my heart is said, seek you my presence. Thy presence, O Lord, I do seek. Hide not thy face from me. Turn not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Do not abandon me. Forsake me not, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother have forsaken me, the Lord will take care of me. Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and guide me in a straight path in spite of my enemies. Deliver me not the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, such as breathe forth violence. I do believe I shall yet see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hope in the Lord, be strong, let your heart be brave, and yes, hope in the Lord. I think a lot of folks are looking forward to a little bit of the Kiddush at the end of the service, some grape juice, some challah. I know I work in another hospital, and there everybody's always asking, I don't always, we always have refreshments at the service, and they always ask me when... Uh, did you bring refreshments this time? Did you bring some grape juice, some yeah. cookies, some challah, something? Sometimes I do, most of the time I don't. I heard a joke, a story, that there was a... I, it kind of ruins the joke when you tell them you're going to tell a joke. I shouldn't have... <laughs> that there was a... In the Roman Colosseum, they were feeding all kinds of victims to the lions. And so the next victim up was a rabbi... 
the rabbi walked up to the lion and whispered something in his ear. And the lion turned around, went back to his cage, and didn't touch the rabbi. And so the emperor who was overseeing this, all these gladiators had been killed, and here this weak little rabbi, he whispers something in the, in the lion's ears, and, and he's gone. He said, all right, you have your freedom. You don't have to worry. But tell me, what did you tell this lion? And he, the rabbi said, I told him, if you want to stay to eat, you're going to have to sit through all the speeches first. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, That's cute. <laughs> Words ha are very powerful. You can think of speeches in history, some of which have gone through all the ages. Think of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Very brief, but very memorable. On the other hand, I don't know, you know, they talk about William Henry Harrison. He had the distinction of having the shortest presidency of any president. It was only about a month or so. But they said, even though he had the shortest presidency, he gave the longest inaugural speech, some three hours long. So don't worry, I'm not going to be here for three hours. I know, for some reason, just now, I was thinking about Charlie Chaplin in the end of The Great Dictator, the speech that he gave, a very powerful speech. I think a lot of folks are familiar with that. Even if we don't agree with everything that was said, I think 90% we could agree with, maybe more. But I think one of the greatest speeches, and of course, also one of the longest, is the Book of Deuteronomy. It's really a series of, of sermons, of speeches that Moses gave his swan song just before he left this world to go to the next. And it's quite powerful, some of the words that we're going to be reading tomorrow morning in the synagogue. We read two parashios, but they happen to be some of the shorter Torah readings, so two together are actually shorter than some of the longest ones on their own. And I think Deuteronomy 30 contains some of the most powerful words. And just by reading these words alone, we don't even need to comment that much. We can find tremendous inspiration. So you'll excuse me just reading from a text, but I don't think I could say anything better than Moses. So Deuteronomy 30, and we're near the end of the book, it says, and it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. Thou shalt bethink thyself among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you. And you shall return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice according to all that which I command you to on this day, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul. That then the Lord your God will return your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered the Jew. If any of you are dispersed, be in the highest part of the heavens. It's from there will the Lord your God gather you. And from there he will fetch you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed and you shall possess it. It will do to you good and multiply you above your ancestors, even more than they. And the Lord your God will open your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. The Lord your God will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, that persecute you. And you shall return and listen to the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command you this day. And the Lord your God will make you overabundant in all the work of your hands, and the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your land for good. And the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your ancestors. And if you will listen to the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his laws, which are written in this book of the law, in this book of the Torah, if you turn unto the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now here it gets very touching. People might think, it's too hard. It's too hard to be a Jew. Moses said no. He gives incredible encouragement. He says, for this mitzvah, this commandment which I command you this day, it is not too hard for you. And it is not too far off. 
away from you. It's not in heaven that you should say, who will go up for us to heaven and bring it down to us and make us to hear it so we should do it. And it's not beyond the sea that you should say, who should go over the sea for us? Bring it to us and make us to hear it so that we may do it. But it, the word is very close to you. This thing is very close to you in your mouth and in your heart to do it. And he continues, see that I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances. You should live and multiply, and the Lord your God should bless you in the land where you go in to possess it. And I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, and I have set before you life and death and blessing of the curse. Therefore choose life, that you may live, you and your seed after you, to love the Lord your God, to listen to his voice, and to cleave unto him. For that is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Powerful words. But they also teach us the power of words. Hidden within there many, are many, many lessons. But I also found kind of a lesson of, of psychology in there. How do we convince ourselves to do the things we know that are right? How do we accomplish the things that we want to accomplish in our lives? Moses says, don't think it's too hard. Don't think it's too far away from you. It's in your mouth and your heart to do it. That means that if you speak something, you say good words, it gets into your brain gets into your mind, it gets into your being, and you start to act that way. And that's for good or for the opposite. People who are always saying negative words start to think negative thoughts and do negative actions. I work in another hospital, and there's a lot of people who need a lot of help. And unfortunately, we had some bad incidents there. And they decided among themselves got to start talking positive words because the violent words and hateful words led to violent and hateful actions. But that means good words can lead to good thoughts which can lead to good actions. Try to make yourself, even if you feel like complaining, unless it's something that's really important. I don't mean when you're in pain. I mean when someone's annoying you or something and you, you don't feel like being friendly to them, maybe say some friendly words to them instead. And you know what's going to happen? You think you're being sarcastic, you think you're being dishonest, but the fact is really deep inside of you, you want to you wanna be friends with everyone. You want everyone to like you. And when you start saying those words, you're really going to mean them. And it's going to change your approach to life, and it's going to make you act better. And the same thing is with your relationship with God. You talk to God in a positive way. We're commanded to love God. So take a moment privately and say, you know what, God, I love you. When you say those words, it's going to change your heart. Most people don't even think of saying something like that. But if you take a moment to say that, I remember Rabbi Miller used to always say that. Rabbi Victor Miller, blessed memory. Say to God, I love you, when no one else can hear. He said, you know, sometimes maybe a subway is passing by, and it's making a lot of noise, and you could scream out, God, I love you. No one else will hear you, but you're screaming at the top of your lungs and putting all your energy into that. It's going to change who you are in your heart, in your mind, and in your actions and your deeds. And when you think something is too hard, don't worry. There's that gift of auto-suggestion that God gave. To put it into our mouths, we say the words, then it goes into our minds, and it goes into our actions. And our world is transformed by the power of speech. 
That's what the psalmist says, have I believe because I speak. That word belief, emuna, not only means faith that we have in God, but it means that you become like a professional. By saying the words, by practicing, talk about practicing religion, it takes practice. It's like, just like playing an instrument takes practice, doing anything takes practice. By engaging in those practices, particularly speech practices. In Judaism, we insist that prayer has to be spoken with the lips. I'm not saying this to be disrespectful to other religions that don't necessarily embrace that. I'm just sharing with you my tradition. What happens when you move your lips? You're performing an action. I remember Rabbi Kellerman in Jerusalem. He spoke about how sometimes people just talk because they want to feel close to the next person, even if they have nothing to tell them. It's a way to build a relationship by just shooting the breeze, just talking, moving your lips, making noise. And people notice that in their lives. When you talk to someone else, you feel you start to build a connection with them. And the fact of the matter is, God doesn't need us to tell him what we need or what we want. He knows what we think. He knows what we need even better than we can think. So why should we pray? So we can develop a relationship with him. So we can actualize his existence in our lives. So we can build a relationship with God. And part of that is by, at least according to the tradition I've received, and it makes sense psychologically and spiritually, that when you move your lips, and you say the words, and you enunciate the words, say them out loud, at least loud enough that you can hear, maybe no one else has to hear, it really changes how you feel. It makes God much more real in your life. He's, he's real whether you acknowledge him or not. But you feel his reality. You develop that relationship. And it's true with all kinds of things in your life, even if you're not religious. Just to move your lips, to say the words. You're reading a book to say the words out loud. It's a different experience than just looking with your eyes. It's the fiqh of above so It's in your mouth and your heart to do it. And that way, we can be worthy to all the blessings. And, and we can really better, make our lives better. Don't think it's too late. Don't think you're setting your ways. First of all, you're not set in your ways. Things are bound to change. And if you're not working to grow, it's just falling. I heard the story of a boy, his 13th birthday, his bar mitzvah, he went to a rabbi for a blessing, and the rabbi asked him, what are you studying now? He said, well, everybody else studies this, I'm studying something else. And the rabbi was familiar with what he was studying. I heard this firsthand from the, now he's, you know, a grandfather, this little boy. The rabbi's been gone for over 25 years or so, 24 years, 23 years, I don't know. No, 20 years, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he said, are you holding by what you're studying? Are you living up to it? He said, well, I'm just a little kid, I'm just 13 years old. He said, no, you don't have to wait. You could do it now. You could try. Same thing could be at the other end of life. You think, oh, I'm already, I've already lived my life, there's nothing new I can do. It's not true. You'll be amazed by what you can do. I went to a college, Toro College. Toro College has campuses all over the world. I remember the founder, the president of the time, Bernie Lander, blessed memory, Rabbi Dr. Bernie Lander. He didn't start Toro College until he was in his 60s. And from there he built a whole empire around the world in Toro College at the time when most people were retiring. And he could have the pride in his 90s to walk into his college campuses and look at what he accomplished in his life. Maybe you're not going to start a college, but maybe you're going to change someone else's life. Maybe you're going to leave a legacy to your grandchildren. Maybe you're going to do something that you can never imagine. And it's all in your mouth and your heart to do it.
want to say the Mishpera. 